time for The Pet Show with America's favorite pet expert, Warren Eckstein. Warren is the author of How to Get Your Cat to Do What You Want and How to Get Your Dog to Do What You Want. He's here to answer all your pet and animal questions. And now, Warren Eckstein. Is your Labrador acting a bit lazy? Does your rescued calico have you crazed? Are your doxies a little depressed? Well, if you love animals, I know you do, if you love animals, care about wildlife and the environment, and want to understand how your dogs and cats think and, and behave the way they do, stay tuned because once again, right here, right now, it is time for the Pet Show. America's first and only real pet psychology, training, behavior, and of course, pet lifestyle show. So hop up on my couch. Ah, bring those adorable little furry buddies with you folks because it is that time once again to let the animal analyzing begin. Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm Warren Eckstein. This is the Pet Show, the place where we absolutely, positively, never, ever a doubt about it, love, adore, and as I stress every single week, respect pets and animals as much as you do. By the way, if your dog or cat is a little bit brighter than you and you want to find out why they're doing some of the crazy things they're doing, they're jumping, they're scratching, they're digging, your dog hates the next door neighbor, your cat hates your new boyfriend. If you have a question about your pet and want to know why, not only why they do what they do, but how to resolve it in a positive, upbeat, loving way, you've come to the right place. If I could join me on the Evergrowing Pet Show family, the phone number here at the Pet Show. Oh, by the way, Alex, you're supposed to remind me that I forget to tell everybody that everyone who calls into the show and does, in fact, get through to me live on the air today. If you ask me a question and I answer it, not only will I resolve your pet's issues, but an major, a major, major gift, easy for me to say, will be arriving at your home for your best friend. I got lots of great stuff to give away. I'll give you a list a little bit later. Uh, you better believe they're great. But by the way, many of the items I give away are 25, 35, 40 bucks and more. So if you have a question about your pet, give me a call. The phone number here at the Pet Show, 860. Lines are open, by the way. Say hello to Suzette, 866-870-KRLA. 866-870-KRLA, or if you're a numbers person, that's 866-870-5752, 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through on this Father's Day weekend. Plenty of time to answer all of your pet and animal questions. And as I said, I have lots of great stuff to give away. Uh, coming up a little bit later on today's show, you guys know it's very, very rare that I'll do an interview on the show, unless it's really, really important. Well, a good friend of mine, a great organization, my good friend Geraldine Gilliland, will be joining me in the second hour of the show. And we're going to be talking about a major event taking place next Sunday. Um, and I will be there. We'll talk about that. She'll tell you some exciting news that's going to be at Cornell in Agora Hills. It's going to be an incredible day. We'll talk more about that with, uh, with Geraldine when she comes on a little bit later on today's show. Uh, she also has a very, very special and exciting announcement to make as well. I'm really excited to hear about it. I'm not even sure I know what it is. So we'll speak to Geraldine a little bit later on today's show as well. But also coming up today, I don't know how I feel about this. I want to get your take on it as well. There's a brand new dog sharing app. That's right. I said a dog sharing app ensuring that pet lovers everywhere can share in the sensation of having an adoring pet by their side. Pet sharing. Is it a good idea or a bad idea? I'll go into it a little bit more later on the show. And I kind of got mixed emotions about it. So I really want to get your take on it. And did you know this? Nearly 70% of households in America have a pet. Of those pets, it's estimated that one in three, one in three will need emergency veterinary treatment every year. But only 30%, only 30% of pet guardians have enough savings to cover a $1,000 emergency, but there are other ways to pay for your pets. We'll talk about that. And, you know, I absolutely love olive oil. I'm a big olive oil people. My grandparents went to Romania. However, olive oil, is it good for your dogs and cats? Should you keep it away from your dogs and cats? Should you give it to your dogs or cats? We'll talk about that a little bit later, and why pet-friendly companies are more likely to attract, engage, and retain their employees. Again, the phone number here, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Plenty of time for your questions and comments. As I said, lots of great stuff to give away. So if your pet is jumping, digging, scratching your favorite chair, cat forgot what the litter box is all about, your dog is suffering with separation anxiety, your dachshund's depressed, your dog's not housebroken, chases anything that moves, take him out for a nice walk and he turns into Cujo. 
or just believes that it's his job. It's his duty, his job. If it walks into your house, he's got to hump it. Give me a call. That's what this show is all about. Helping you cope with your pets more than likely helping your pets cope with you. It is not easy living with people. Believe me, I know. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number. 866-870-5752. I'm going to get him moved today. I don't know why. 866-870-5752. The question of the day. Pretty simple. Would you choose a job would you choose a job that lets you bring your pets to work? Would you rather have a job? Would you be more apt to show up every day, work longer hours, be a better employee if you were allowed to bring your pet to work? Give me a call. I want to know. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. So many announcements, and I promise I'll get to some of your phone calls. Uh, as I said, coming up later, we'll be speaking to my good friend, Geraldine Gill. And by the way, if you've not been to one of her amazing restaurants in Santa Monica, two of my favorites, I got to tell you, uh, just an amazing lady, Lula Cucina Mex uh, Mexicana, uh, just an incredible, we'll talk more to, uh, about her a little bit later on the show. But if you want more information on the event right now, the event that's going to take place a week from Sunday, uh, I'll be there. Go to chiquitasfriends.org. That's chiquitasfriends.org, just like the banana, chiquitasfriends.org. Or you can see it on my, the front page of my website, which is simply thepetshow.com. And not only will we be able to bring your dogs and walk you, oh, we'll talk more. To, and she's got a whole bunch of new stuff to tell you about. Also, Father's Day weekend, if you'd like to tell me about your father and his relationship with his pets, give me a call, 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. And you know, my big, big, big supporter of Delta Rescue, what an incredible organization, my good friend, Leo. They have an incredible free gift for my listeners. I'll tell you more about that a little bit later on today's show as well. Uh, but when you visit Delta Rescue's estate planning page, you can download this special gift. If you've always, listen to me carefully, if you've always wondered, if you've always wondered what will happen when you once again meet your beloved dogs or cats at the Rainbow Bridge, this amazing book just may have the answer. And my good friend Leo and Delta will let you download it for free. We'll talk more about that a little bit later on today's show as well. 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Uh, before we get to the phones, or if you have friends, by the way, that may not be able to listen to the Los Angeles show, or they might be out running around Father's Day weekend, you can watch and hear the show at facebook.com slash warrenpet facebook.com slash Warren Pet, or you can listen to the show live in hundreds of different ways. If you want to find out how to do it, just go to my website, thepetshow.com, thepetshow.com. Let me just say this because it is Father's Day weekend. The phones are getting jammed. I'll get to your phones in just a second. Uh, I had a very special relationship with my father. I adored him and I loved him and I lost him way too young. So let me just share a little reflection on my father and we'll get right to your phone calls. On this Father's Day weekend, I reflect on the important lessons I learned from my own father who I lost way too young. He taught me to always stick to my beliefs and passions and respect those of others, but never ever be afraid to speak out and always, always be willing to accept the consequences. He would say to me, Warren, I spent six years in the jungles of New Guinea during World War II in some pretty heavy major battles, but it was nothing compared to raising you, my son. Like father, like son, I'm very proud of that. Happy Father's Day, Pop. We'll see you one day again soon. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. Let me go to a phone call. That's what this show's all about, helping you respond to your issues with your pets and your pets respond to their issues with you. Catherine, Pomona, welcome to the Pet Show. Hi. How you Can doing? You hear me? Yeah. Okay, good, good. Um, I have a rescue Pomeranian Chihuahua. She's six months old. And she like nips you like a little piranha and licks you at the same time. Do you have any way for me to help her stop? You know, it's funny because she just called me and asked, how can I help her get over Catherine? So let me ask yeah. you, let me ask you a question, Catherine. Okay. You rescued yeah. the dog. How long ago? Um, I've had her for two and a half months. Okay. And she came from what kind of background? Um, she was dumped at a um, kill shelter with her mother when her and her three siblings were one week old. That's my then, point exactly. That's exactly where I was headed. It's like I'm, it's like I'm cresking today. Listen to me carefully, okay? Here's okay. what the story is. When a puppy is born, the first thing the mother does is lick the puppy. 
The second thing the mother does is kind of nurse the puppy, right? But when the puppies are with each other in their litter, when puppies are with each other, they're chewing on each other, uh, they're licking each other constantly, cleaning each other, because the licking is a, a sign of confidence, a, a sign of positiveness in them. So what happened now is this dog being separated from her litter mates way too young, then coming into your home is now treating you more like a litter mate than a guardian. So what we need to do at this point, we don't want to yell at her, we don't want to say no, because the dog is licking and chewing on you out of love, not out of hate or because she wants to hurt you. It would be like telling someone no if they came up and gave you a big hug. No, I don't want to be hugged. So here's what I recommend that you do. It's real simple. When the dog is licking, when the dog is chewing on you, no overreaction because as soon as you pull away and as soon as you say no, no, you're reinforcing it in a, in a negative way. What I'd like you to do is that's the time when you should do, start doing some basic training. Put a little harness on the dog, a little leash on the dog, practice some basic training, distract her a little bit. Don't say no, but just distract her a little bit. And if you're consistent, you'll notice a difference. But this is the important part. When the dog is licking and biting you, Catherine, it hurts, right? Yeah, kind of. It's <laughs> puppy teeth. Yeah, and then you pull away. It's the milk teeth. And then you pull away. And the more you pull away, it becomes a tug of war. You're teaching the dog to play with you more. So here's what I want you to do. The next time the dog is licking or chewing on you, don't react. Get up and walk away. Once the dog learns that by biting at you and nipping at you and licking you is getting him no attention, hey, why bother? So focus on the positive aspect of your basic training, but also sometimes ignoring a problem is often the best way to resolve it because if they're not getting attention, there's no reason to, to, to do it. It's just that simple. Does that make sense to you? It makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Don't yeah. go, hey, listen, don't go anywhere. How old is your dog now? Uh, she's six months. And what's her name? Precious. Oh, what a great name. Now, why did you adopt versus going out and buying? Um, well, she was a little over two months when we adopted her. We, we got her from a Pomeranian rescue. Yeah. They went, they went and got them out of the kill shelter. You know, and they were, they were already um, advertising for her to get a, uh, a home. Uh, and so she found the perfect home in Pomona. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, listen, Kath, yeah. here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put you on hold, and because you got this new puppy, I am going to send you a copy of How to Get Your Dog to Do What You Want. That's my book, and it will guide you through this. I just love my listeners. You know, they're all out there adopting dogs and, and saving dogs' lives and cats' lives, for that matter. Matter. I think, I think it's incredible that the majority, I would say that 95 to 98% of my listeners have adopted or rescued their pets in one way or the other. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866 870 5752. Plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away. Uh, if you'd like to give me a call and tell me how uh, how your father was with dogs, I want to know that as well. 866 uh, 870 KRLA, the phone number. Uh, we take a quick break. When we come back, we got Bob in Hollywood. We got Mike in uh, Los Angeles. We got uh, uh, Mary Lou. We got Eileen in Armando. We'll get to all your calls right after this. 866 870 KRLA, the phone number. 866 870 5752. Pa on this Father's Day week. I wonder how many people out there remember Eddie Fish. He was what? He was married. Alex is looking at Eddie who? He was married to Debbie Reynolds. Who? <laughs> Two who's I'm getting there. Hey, we're back on the Pet Show. One of my favorite songs, by the way. And hope on this Father's Day weekend you take some time to reflect on your relationship with your dad. I had a great relationship with my father. Lost him a little too young. You know, he was a you know Purple Heart recipient in World War II and taught me how to be me. Taught me to respect everyone out there. Um, we're back on the Pet Show. I'm Warren Eckstein, 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through plenty of time. Fear calls. I just hit the wrong button here. Alex is looking at me like I'm crazy. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number. We got lots of great stuff to give away. Let me give you a list of what I'm giving away. My own hugs and kisses, vitamin, mineral, supplement treats will be on their way to your home. Or my Lucy Pet Food Formula for Life, an incredible food. You just heard me do a commercial. Kids and Pets Stain and Auto Remover. Those amazing T-shirts that say none of my friends walk up, right? Just saw somebody walking on Venice Beach with one the other day. Copies of my behavior books, Dog or Cat. Cat's Incredible Cat Litter, Author Suit Gold, Mushroom Max, Hemp Allergy Calming, Hemp Calming, Hemp Immune, Hemp Joint. Lots of great stuff to give away. Plenty of time for your calls. Phone number here, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Hey, let's go to Bob in Hollywood. Uh, I definitely want, I'm going to get to you, Mike, Mary Lou. Eileen, you got a great question, by the way. And the same thing with uh, Lou, Mary Lou in uh, Pan uh, Panorama City. Uh, my dog's going through basically the same thing, so we want to talk to you in a bit. But right now, it is Bob's turn in Hollywood. Hey, Bob in Hollywood, welcome to the show. Yeah. 
What's up? Yeah, hi. It's a pleasure to uh, talk to you. Now, I have a, a neighbor gave me a Yorkshire when he was three months old. Uh, he's now 20 months old. Constantly, when I take him outside, he barks at other dogs and and many people who walk by. Uh, let me ask you a question, okay? Why did your friend give up the dog? Well, because um, he was a large... She Okay, <clears throat> she raises... Uh, what you, tiny Yorkshires, you know, the little miniature ones. Okay, so in other words, in other words, this dog wasn't tiny enough for her, so she decided she didn't want it and gave it to you. Exactly. I don't understand it. I'm glad my parents didn't give me away because I was a little taller than my sister. But anyway, listen to me oh, carefully. Yeah. Listen to me carefully, okay? You've had the dog how long? I've had him now uh, almost two years, about... Um, 16, 17 months. Okay, now when he's I in the house, that. when he's in the house hanging out with you, Bob, he's pretty quiet? He's not bad, not bad. Okay, but you take him out, you take him out for a walk and he barks at everything? Yeah. How often do you walk him? Oh, four or five times a day. Okay, do you only take him for walks? You ever just hang out somewhere? Yeah, in the park. And what happens when you hang out in the park? Uh, he's better. Okay. He's better. He's better. Okay, here's my resolution to your problem, okay? You know, it's kind of instant. It amazes me that some people with pets, not in your case, but a lot of people want instant gratification. And anything worthwhile is worth working for. In your situation, this is a small dog. It might be a large Yorkie, but it's a small dog, okay? Right. So the bottom right. line is, I don't know, he was around all these other dogs. She's a breeder of dogs. So his first, till you got him, his socialization was around other dogs. How do dogs communicate? Uh, by sniffing. And what else? They bark, don't they? And bark. So in other words, the first, it was kind of like the kid who was brought up by, by, uh, by sorry, Tarzan, brought up by animals in the wild. This dog was around all these other dogs, and therefore his early socialization was around other dogs, and there he reacts to other dogs and people on the street as if they were another dog. So here's what you need to do. Number one is you need to spend more time with him outside, but not just walking him. What I would do, I would take him to an area in the park. If you have some friends, maybe they can meet you there. They know when you're going to be there. So when they come by, they can say, hey, to the dog, give him a treat or a biscuit. What your dog needs now is a little bit more socializing around people. What happens now is when people go by or a dog goes by, Bob, and your dog barks, that person continues to walk or continues to walk by you as does the dog. So your dog assumes he did the right thing because this interloper is now running away. So every time he barks at another dog or a person and they walk by, we're just creating more of a problem. That's specifically why I want you to set up scenarios where you can be at a location and have people that already know the dog and he may know a little bit come by little by little. I also want you to do some basic training with the dog. So when he's being obnoxious in terms of barking, it's not no, 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 no. You take that leash, you take that collar, a little basic training, establish some positive authority and you'll be on target. So this is not a problem dog. This is a dog that's a little confused because its early life was just around other dogs and, and, and puppies and, and barking. And so he's just reacting that way he would normally react. It's up to you to teach him the right way. And the way to calm the dog down is not by being assertive or aggressive. The way to calm the dog down is by socializing, training, and distracting. And that's what you need to do at this point. Makes a lot of sense. Thank you very much. Hey, Bob, what you, what's the dog's name? Fido. Fido. Do you know, it's so funny you should say that. And let me tell you why. I've trained over 40,000 dogs. And for those people saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's not my, it's according to Guinness's world records, okay? So here's my situation. Right. In all the years, when I ran my dog training school in New York City, which was the largest, right. I would give out a diploma at the end of the dog training class. So if your dog was, uh, was Duke, I would say, uh, here's to Duke, graduating class, blah, blah, blah. Nice, really nice diploma. In all the uh, years I've been training, and 40,000 dogs later, I only trained one dog named Fido. And when I went uh, to give the dog the diploma, on the diploma, I wrote F-I-D-O. Fido, right? right? The lady right. gave me the diploma back and said, no, that's not how you spell my dog's name. It's P-H-Y-D-E-A-U-X. That's how you spell right. Fido. So I hope you spell it F-I-D-O and not with a P-H-Y. No, FIDO. There you go. Anyway, listen, uh, by the way, you're the only the second Fido I've really known. I'm going to put you on hold. Don't go anywhere. We're going to put you on hold. And for Fido, I am going to send you, um, you know, you're going to be walking around a lot in Hollywood. I'm going to send you one of my T-shirts that say none of my friends walk upright. Enjoy it. 
866-870 KRLA, the phone number 866-870-5752. That is the way to give. How does someone do that? The dog's a little big, so I'm gonna give the dog away. I only breed little Yorkies, so this dog came out a little big. I don't understand it. I just don't understand it. How do you look into the eyes of anything that's alive and do that? I don't I don't care. She found a good home. I got to give her credit for that. But the bottom line is, I don't know how people do that. 866-870, Carol. I got to take a break. When we come back, we have uh, Mike in Los Angeles with a Boston Terrier uh, that is humping everything. We got a dog going deaf in Panorama City. Uh, we got Eileen in, in Almonte. Uh, by the way, I mean, if you want to hang on, I, I can, but uh, Delta gets their own animals. Delta's not going to come out and rescue. That's not what they're all about. So what I would recommend, I can answer your question and tell you some other places to go. So hang in there. We'll get to you. And also Natalie, her rescue cats from a hoarding situation, still peas in the room. We'll take care of that as well. The phones are jammed. 866-870-KRLA. The phone number, 866 866- 8705752 on this Father's Day weekend. If you'd like to share a story about your father and growing up with your dad and, and pets, just give me a call. Got lots of great stuff to give away. Plenty of time to answer your questions. And the question of the day is, would you choose a job? Would you choose a job that lets you bring your pets to work? I know I would. How about you? 866-870-KRLA, the phone number. Hello, I'm Warren Eckstein. That phone number, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870. 5752 on this Father's Day weekend. We got Mike, Mary Lou, Eileen, Natalie, and Francis. We'll get to all your calls. Great time to call me. Lots of great stuff to give away as well. Right now, let me get back to the busy, busy phone lines here. I know I'm not going to get to any of my subjects again this week. The phones are jammed. Let's go to Mike in Los Angeles, then we'll go to Mary Lou. Hey, Mike, welcome to the show. Hey, I'm here. How are you? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm pretty good. Thank you for asking. Uh, so here's the deal my boy, Bo, Boston Terrier. Awesome dog. Um, got him about six months ago on, uh, I found him on a Craigslist ad. I, I picked him up from this woman uh, in the middle of nowhere. Long story short, um, he's awesome. He gets along great with me in the house. When I take him to the dog park, he just kind of like loses it. You know, he gets so excited. He's so happy. And for instance, I was there last night and he was just, he latches onto one or two dogs like this uh, English bulldog last night. Boy, it was a male one and stopped humping him. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, he's about 10, 11 months old, something like that. And, you know, another female dog, same thing. He just latches on to, you know, he, he was latching on to her. So let me ask, let me ask you a question, Mike. Uh, is your assumption that when your dog humps another dog, male or female, that it's sexually? No, well, I've heard also it's like a dominant. That's thing. exactly, you that's know, exactly, that's exactly my point. So in other words, very often when you have a dog that is the type of dog that is mounting a lot of other dogs, males, females, it doesn't make any difference. It's not a sexual preference at that point. It's usually, or 90% of the time, it's a sign of dominant behavior. Now, this woman that gave you the dog, you bought the dog from on Craigslist. By the way, um, let me ask you a question. Did she have other dogs when you went to pick up this dog? Nope, we were, I thought I was going to her house, uh, you know, very nice woman, uh, I thought I'd go into her house, next thing I know, I meet her in a parking lot of 7-Eleven. Uh, let me tell you what, let me tell you, let me tell you why you met her in the parking lot at 7-Eleven. Chances are, she has all kinds of dogs, she's probably breeding at the house and selling them on Craigslist to people like you who love animals, and yet she's not going to want you to come to her home, because I'm sure it's a disaster, she's going to meet you in a parking lot, it's kind of like a drug deal, okay? And that's what a lot, I'm not a big fan Literally. of Craigslist. But that's exactly my point. Yeah, that's exactly my point. I hear this all the time. And, and sometimes there's abuse and all kinds of things. So that's the best way. If you're looking for a dog, go to a shelter, rescue Humane Society, and adopt them. But anyway, here's the scenario. Well, the, look at I, the way I look at it is I, I kind of saved him. I went to pet him when the trunk was open. He got all scared. So I was like, I'm taking him. I wasn't even going to get a dog. I saw. She had there. the dog in the trunk? Yeah, it was it was an SUV, so it wasn't in the actual trunk. Okay. It was in the back. Unbelievable. It wasn't even like in, in uh, the back. Unbelievable. So puppy at Anyway, let me, let, first of all, that, it, it drives me crazy. So before I lose it, okay, let me, let me resolve your issue for you, okay? The answer to your question for a dog that's humping everything is not cold showers. It's not a copy of Play Dog magazine. Your dog doesn't need more sexual activity, okay? What your dog needs is more, uh, more consistent training on your part. In other words, what we need to do is establish positive authority. I've said this five times already, positive authority with the dog. So for example, if the dog 
dog is humping another dog and you get excited and start saying, knock it off, stop it. Yeah, what you're doing is actually getting the dog even more excited. And so the humping will continue at that point. The way to resolve the humping behavior is when you see it immediately with the leash and the harness, do some basic training at that point to establish your authority. If the dog goes off again and does it again, you repeat. As long as you're consistent, the, uh, the, the humping will stop. Now, how long ago was this dog uh, neutered? Uh, about three weeks. Okay, so it's, he's just been neutered recently. You said he's how old now? Ten months? Roughly, yeah, nine, ten, eleven months. So she never gave me a birthday, which here, I realize now here, that, that was kind of important. Yeah, here is here is my bottom line on your dog, okay? He was around a lot of other dogs when he was really, really young, obviously. And in order to survive, he had to be more dominant. And to get food, he had to be more dominant. And therefore, the humping started as a way of survival, continued as dominant behavior. So no yelling, no screaming. Again, no cold showers or play dog magazine. What I want you to do is just use your basic training. I'm going to send you a copy of my book. I want you to use the basic training, Mike, to establish positive authority. This dog is going to turn out to be the greatest dog in the world because he is the type of dog that has all that energy. But what you need to do, just like with a bright child, is take that energy now and focus it in the right direction. Rather than focus on the negative, no, no, stop humping that dog, don't do do that blah blah you're embarrassed no focus on the positives little by little you'll start seeing major changes in the dogs i'm glad you got the dog i just wish people would stop getting their dogs on craigslist because every time someone buys a dog on craigslist it encourages people that are doing illegal breeding and horrible breeding to breed more but i'm glad this dog found a great home like yours Mike. yeah he's great and just real quick thank you warren but you know positive reinforcement would be you know a hypothetical example at the dog park he starts humping he wears his harness i put him on back on the leash and maybe grab a treat and pet him or something no no because if you grab a treat and pet him at that point you just grabbed the treat and petted him and, and said you know go hump something else i'm going to give you a treat and, and, and whenever you do it you know so what you need to do is do some basic training at that point sit stay down to establish authority my book will answer a lot of that but the most important thing to remember is don't get angry at the dog the dog's not doing it to say haha watch watch how I can embarrass Mike at the doggy park. That's not right, why he's right, doing right. it. He's doing it because it's his way of establishing some type of authority. And it sounds to me like it was a puppy mill scenario. There were lots of dogs kind of challenging each yeah. other and survival yeah. was based on dominant behavior. Therefore, he's just transferring it to where you are now, but it's not necessary. Right, right. All right. Very good. Thank you so much. Mike, give that puppy a hug and a kiss. I'll put you on hold. We're going to send you a copy also of how to get your dog to do what you want. And bless you for taking that dog. I know I, I say this all the time. It's such mixed emotions because what would have happened to this dog if Mike didn't take it? But the more people that go to Craigslist, the more problems, the more dogs are going to be bred. And believe me, the shelters and rescues are full. Hey, the phone number here, 866-870-KRLA. I got lots... I got lots of time to answer all of your pet questions. Uh, again, that number, 866-870-5752, 866-870-KRLA. That is the way to get through. You know what? Let me take a quick break. When we come back, Mary Lou, you're going to be up next. Now we got Eileen and Almonte. we got Natalie and Lake Forest. we got Francis and Whittier. Great time to give me a call. That phone number again, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Five seven five two. That is the way to get to. And we are back on the pet show. I'm Warren Eckstein. Phone number here eight six six eight seventy K R L A eight six six eight seven zero five seven five two. Plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away. By the way, if you have friends that are out of the listening audience and they want to listen to the show, uh, they can go to facebook.com slash Warren Pet. Facebook.com slash Warren Pet, and they can actually hear the show no matter where they are. They can listen to the network show, which goes on it right after this. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But right now, let me get back to the busy phone lines here on this Father's Day weekend, and we are going to Mary Lou. Hey, Mary Lou, welcome to the Pet Show. Hi, Warren. Thanks for all you do. Well, I appreciate that. What can I do to help you today? I've noticed in the last two months that my dog seems to have lost his hearing, which it breaks my heart for him. How old is your, Mary Lou, how old is your dog? Uh, he'll be 11 next month. And what type of dog is it? He's an Irish setter. Oh, I love Irish setters. You know, the original Irish setters weren't red. They were red and white. You know that, right? 
Yes, I do. Uh, beautiful dogs. Beautiful. I used to have them in the St. Paddy's Day Parade uh, in New York. Anyway, let me go over a few things. You know, my Cisco is just about 16 years old, and he started losing his hearing about a year ago. And right now, I would say that he's got probably 98 or 99 percent hearing loss. And what you need to understand is that there's a lot of changes going on from their perspective as well. Number one is you want to make sure you have your eyes on the dog and you have your dog on a leash all the time. Because if the dog were to see another dog or were to take off and you were to call him back, obviously he can't hear you. So you want to make sure you're with your dog constantly, even when he's in the backyard. Because if there's something approaching it from the back, God knows what, he's not going to know it. So you need to be real careful about that. I spent 24... 100%. Oh, well, that's perfect. So that's, exact, that's exactly how I am with Cisco, okay? What you can do, there are many things you can do. I may do this a little more with Cisco, but, you know, Cisco's kind of 16 years old, so I'm reacting a little different than the advice I'm going to give you. Is what I would recommend that you do, is I would recommend, number one, that when you're behind the dog or not that far from the dog and he's nice and mellow and he can see you, I want you to stamp your foot. They're very sensitive to vibration. And what you can start doing by stamping your foot, the dog will react to you, use your hand, call him over to you and give him a lot of praise. So even if he's on the other side of the room and you were to stamp your foot on the floor, he would feel that vibration and react to you. Now, years ago, I was doing a lot of training for a lot of dogs that had certain challenges. Many of those challenges were for hearing challenges. And what I did is I would use a very, very high intensity flashlight. You can get them at Army Navy stores, or I'm sure that you can find them at Home Depot or Lowe's. And what I would do is just before I fed the dog, I would show the high intensity flashlight somewhere. Or when the dog was in the backyard, I would point the light. And when I got his attention, I would give him a treat and call him back into the house. So what will eventually happen is that high intensity flashlight now replaces his hearing. His vision now replaces his hearing. And generally speaking, when a dog loses one of its senses, the other senses become stronger. So I noticed that Cisco, my little guy, is using his nose a lot more than he ever used before, being that he's not hearing the same way he was. So you want to be cautious, conscientious. You want to make sure that you know where the dog is. You're with the dog 100% of the time. That's important. And just understand that they're very adaptable. Over the years, I've had dogs with three legs, dogs that were blind, dogs that were deaf, dogs that were blind and deaf, and they will adapt. So just give them a lot of time be patient and it's hard sometimes because once you've lived with a dog that hears you and you're saying to the dog calm and you're saying what a good boy and you're getting that tail wagging and all of a sudden you're not getting that reaction or you're in the backyard and you're calling your dog at 11 o'clock at night and he doesn't come back when you call him we tend to get frustrated don't get frustrated at the dog it's not his fault he can't hear give him a lot of praise and a lot of attention when he does come back be conscientious and i think you'll be absolutely fine well, if it's possible, it's making me love him more. Yeah, they, they, you do that. You know, it's interesting that when you live with something that has challenges, whether it be a human, an animal, doesn't make any difference. You tend to be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not only you love them, but more compassionate. And you, you tend to kind of, they tend to be a little needier. Like my guy now... I, I, he's like Velcro. No matter when I'm home, Cisco is either on my lap, on top of my head, next to me. Literally, I woke up this morning and I was so cramped up because I have a California king size bed and literally one of my arms was off, one of my legs was off, and I think my head was off the bed as well. But you know what? You're absolutely right. You do get a little bit more uh, more uh, attention with him. So I think it's, I don't think it's anything to worry about. If he's losing his hearing, hopefully you got a whole lot of years ahead of him. Just react and respond the way I said, and you'll be fine. Well, thank you very much. It seems like he's following me uh, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're fine. It's like I said, you're going to find that when a living thing, dog, animal, when they become a little bit more needy, when they start having certain challenges. I mean, I become more challenged as I get older, more needy too. So no different with our pets. So just respond to the neediest. Give them a hug and a kiss and just love every day you have them. And there's no reason that they, they simply lose their hearing. Yeah, as they, as they get older, you know, there's been some experimentation. What they've done years ago is they took a, a human, a human, a, a, what am I looking for? That makes people hear better. What, what's the word I'm looking for? Hearing aids. Hearing they aids. would take human hearing aids from someone who passed away and try to implant those hearing aids and use those hearing aids in dogs. Some were successful, some not. But I think at your point, you're just going to notice the dog's going to be more attentive towards you and he's going to want to be on top of you more because he's feeling a little bit insecure as well. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And you give him a hug and a kiss. I'm going to put you on hold. And you know what? I am going to send you some hemp seed oil uh, for your joints, for, not your joints, but for your dog's joints, 11-year-old Irish setter. I'm going to send you some uh, hemp seed oil for him. I'm sure that's going to make him feel a lot better. Hey, the phone number here at the Pet Show, 866-870-KRLA, 
5752. Quick break, then Eileen, Natalie, Francis, Mary, and we'll get to all your calls, I promise. And we are back on the pet show. Here's the deal. We're going to be breaking for the top of the hour. We come back, Eileen, you're going to be my first call. Natalie, Francis, Mary, and Chris, we're just going to break for a minute or two. So just hang out there. Give your dogs and cats a big hug and a kiss. Grab yourself a cup of coffee. We've got plenty of stuff coming up. By the way, in the next hour, uh, there's going to be a, a, a big event taking place next Sunday. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be uh, just an incredible, incredible day at Cornell and Agora Hills for Chiquita's friends. I'll tell you more about that. I'll be interviewing Geraldine Gilliland, great lady, a good friend, and we'll tell you about the event taking place next Sunday. I'd love to you come out. You can walk dogs. You can bring your dogs. She'll tell you more about it. I'll be there that day. Lovely Denise will be there. And uh, if you need some advice, I'll be there to give you some advice. So it should be a whole lot of fun. Geraldine will be coming up in the next hour. The phone number here right now, just a quick break, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. I'm Warren Eckstein. This is The Pet Show. Warren Eckstein, the man for your pets. Try to stumble, but we haven't yet. Your dog is barking, your cat is the fox. Your ferret's chewed up all your favorite socks. You should know how to get inside your pants head. The baby is you who needs to be trained instead. And welcome back to the second hour. I'm Warren X. Fine. This is the Pet Show, America's first and only real pet psychology training behavior. And of course, Pet Lifestyle Show. If you'd like to join me on the Ever Growing Pet Show family, that phone number 866 870 KRLA. Got a question or comment? Want to share a story? Brag about your dog, cat, bird, whatever you have? 866 870 5752. As you guys know, when I get off the air here, I go across the hall to my national, my Canadian show. But if you have friends in the, uh, that may not be uh, in one of my cities, we're in over 200, if they're not in one of them, uh, they can listen to the show and watch me do the show on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash Warren Pet. Facebook.com slash Warren Pet. Just remember that that's where we do Facebook every week live here at the show. Again, that number, 866-870-KRLA. Um, I have an interview coming up at 1230 with my good friend, Geraldine Gilliland. We're going to be talking about a big event taking place next Sunday. It's going to be amazing. It's at Cornell and Agora Hills. You're going to love it. I'm going to tell you about it when she tells you about it. It's going to be an amazing day you're not going to want to miss. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, also, uh, it's important uh, to remember uh, that if you have a dog or cat, and it's going to be warmer as the summer gets on, uh, go to my website. There's some great tips there, thepetshow.com, on keeping your pets safe and healthy during the hot weather season. 866-870-KRLA. Our phones are jam-packed. Let me go to Elaine in Almonte. Hi, uh, Eileen, rather. Hi, Eileen. Welcome to the Pet Show. Hi, Warren. How are you today? Pretty good, and you? I'm doing fine. What can I do for you? Okay. Uh, did you see the Delta Rescue couldn't rescue the kitty? Yeah, Delta Rescue. Delta Delta's a sanctuary, okay? It's a whole different ball game. It's a sanctuary. When you live in Almonte, what you should be doing is contacting the local rescue cat rescue organizations. Uh, they can do uh, TNR trap, neuter, release. They can guide you a little bit, but that's who you need to work with. In the, in the local organization in Almonte, if you contact uh, your local veterinarian, actually, if you go to any of the larger pet stores in your area or veterinary hospitals, you can pick up a copy of the pet press, give you a list of all the cat organizations that are there that can guide you and help you rescue some of these cats and trap, neuter, and release them or, or find homes from them. So that would be my recommendation. Pick up a copy of um, uh, the pet press at any of the, the veterinary hospitals, or whatever, uh, or you can go to my website, thepetshow.com. There's also a list there of some rescue and humane organizations. Now I have another question. Go ahead. Could you tell me if a person can deworm their cat themselves or do they need special medicine? Well, let me ask you a question. What type of worms does your dog have? Uh, no, I'm not a dog. I got a cat. He keeps going potty all the time. I think he has the worm. Well, in other words, if you don't know, in other words, people should have it checked. What you need to do is bring a stool specimen into the veterinarian. Let the veterinarian test it. He will find out what type of parasite, what type of ascarid is there, and then treat it accordingly. Because you don't want to treat the wrong type of, of, of parasite. So it's important that the vet take a look at your cat's poop. This way he can determine if there are worms, what type of worms they are, and treat it that way. Okay. Well, thank you. Now, listen, how many cats do you have? 
Thank you. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put you on hold, and I'm going to send you one of my favorite gifts, okay? I'm going to send you some Lucy Pets Cat Incredible Cat Litter. Believe me, take it from Warren. This is a cat litter that's amazing. The only one I've ever recommended and endorsed, and your cats will be giving you the high five once you change over. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. Um, let's go to uh, Natalie in Lake Forest. Hey, Natalie, welcome to the pet show. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing super. What's up? Okay, so I volunteer for a rescue. Bless and you. I have a female cat right now that was taken out of a hoarder house that had about 65 cats. Wow. And I, she had a litter of kittens that didn't do very well because she wasn't very healthy. So we were able to save at least one of them through bottle feeding. But the kitten has now been separated from her. And she's, she, when I had her in like a playpen with her kittens, she was going in the litter box. Now I, I let her into a room and she's going pee all over the rug. So I tried your kids and pets. You know, I cleaned the rug real well. I sprayed the kids and pets. I put food down on little paper plates or little paper towels in the area where she's peeing, but she's still peeing on the rug. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Were there other cats and other dogs in that room before this cat came in? Yes, I've had other rescue Okay, animals. so in other words, this is a rescued cat, okay? This cat comes into your home from where now? From a hoarding situation where there are lots of other cats. So in other words, everything about this cat's life, whether it be feeding, whether it be using a litter box, was based on her relationship with all these other cats. So now that she has her own space in your home, but yet the scent of other cats are still in that space, she's going to mark that territory. So what you really need to do, and I'm glad you're using the kids and pet stain and odor remover, because that's the only thing that's going to get rid of the scent from her perspective. My recommendation to you is how much time, well, actually, my question to you is how much time, Natalie, do you actually spend in that room where she's going with the cat? A few hours a day. Okay. What type, of, what type of room is it? I have to spread my time between the different cats that I'm... Oh, okay. I forgot that you were... Yeah, I forgot. In, she's in an individual bedroom. Oh, okay. So she has a private bedroom of her own. It's carpeted. You've cleaned up with the kids and pet stain and odor remover. You put some food down around uh, around the room. Yeah. And how many litter boxes are in that room? One. And what type of litter are you using? Not a brand name, is it? What type of litter? It's uh, like a wood wood shaving. Okay. Do you, know, do, do you know the type of litter that we're using when she was being hoarded at the other home? I don't have any idea. Okay. Have you tried putting some of her mess? Go, she goes in the litter box. She just doesn't go in there all the time. So she'll pee and she poop. She does use the box. She'll pee and poop in the litter box. Yes, she does. Okay. Here's what I want you to do. But she also pees on my rug. She okay. doesn't poop on the rug. She just pees on the rug. Well, that's, that's just a territorial thing. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to continue using the kids and pet stain in order to move it to clean up. I, I, you're spending time with the cat in that room. I'd like you to spend more time on the floor with her. I'd like you to put down yeah. three or four dishes that are always down. They're always down on the floor. Even if they don't have food in them, I don't care. They have the smell of food in them. I want four dishes down all the time. Also in that okay. room, I want a lot of mental stimulation. I want those cardboard boxes. I want paper bags. I want you to change them every single day. Let her scratch and start using her feet to claim territory versus her butt to claim the territory. That's going to make Natalie a whole lot happier. In other words, Words. Yeah. Also, also, what I want you to do is I want you to make sure that those dishes are spread kind of almost in every corner of the room as well as one in the middle. Change the boxes every single day. I'm going to change the cat's litter at this point because I want a second litter box in that room right now. So what I want to do is so I want... You Two different ones or change them both? Two different ones. No, no, two different litter boxes. I okay. want to give her the option. She can use the, the litter that she's using right now because she's using it, or she can use the new litter that I'm going to send you, which is much better litter anyway, and hopefully she'll make the transition. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send you some, uh, some uh, uh, Cat's Incredible Cat Litter from Lucy Pets. That'll make a difference for you. But I think the most important thing right now is to understand the rescue work that you do and I'm sure you have the scent of cats all over you. And I'm sure that every time you go in that room, from her perspective, it's like another cat walked in that room. Therefore, she or he feels the need to claim territory again. Also, what I would try to recommend is when you do have time, if you can take the cat out of that room for a little bit and just sit with her on your lap, I think that would be beneficial as well. So I can walk up to her very, very slowly and reach my hand over and she, she'll she let me pet her most of the time oh. every once in a while she hisses, but she trembles. Okay, so, so, that, so, so, so let, let me, let me. Changing her environment would be 
good for her. Right. Well, in other words, if they're in one environment constantly, that environment becomes their whole life, which makes them even more territorial. Okay. So, but but so in other words, it wouldn't make her more nervous. No, no, no. I'm, I'm going attention. back. Uh, uh, listen, I'm going back on what I said. Okay. You didn't tell me that she was shy and didn't like to be picked up. Okay. So what I would do is when you go into the room, just start kind of stroking her and walk away. Stroke her once, walk away. Stroke her twice, walk away. Next time, three times, walk away. Let her gain more confidence about being around you. Then we can make the transition about bringing her into other rooms. Okay. How about the changing and adding all the boxes and things every day? You don't think that'll make her more nervous? No, I don't think it will. If you put a couple of boxes down, okay. I, I think when you put a new scent in there and it's the type of scent that's not on the floor or the carpet, but on a box, she may start claiming territory because cats have scent glands on their feet, on their pads. So she might right. start claiming by scratching on the boxes versus ping. And I'm sure everyone's going to be happy about that. All right. Thank you so hey, much. First of all, no, first of all, Natalie, thank you for the rescue work that you do. What's the name of your organization? Dream Animal Rescue. Is it a nonprofit? Yes, it is. Okay, well, why don't you let us know about it? Send me a note at uh, mail at thepetshow.com. Um, we're kind of broke right now, but every once in a while, we get an influx of money, and we send it out to some of the smaller groups. They could submit a, uh, an application. So tell them to send us some information on their group to mail at thepetshow.com, okay? I sure will. Thank you so much. You have, don't go anywhere. I'm going to put you on hold. The lovely Suzette is going to pick up, and I am going to send you some Lucy Pets Cats Incredible Cat Litter. I think that'll also make a difference for your pet. Hey, great time to give me a call. Plenty of time to answer your questions and comments. The phone number here, 866 870 K-R-L-A, 866-870-5752. Still got some hugs and kisses to give away. I have some more Lucy pet food to give away. A kids and pet stain and odor remover. Those t-shirts, everyone wants these t-shirts. Copies of my books. You just heard me give some Cats Incredible, Cat Litter, Authors of Gold, Mushroom Max, MC Dwarf. Lots of great stuff to give away. Plenty of time for your calls. The phone number, 866-870-K-R-L-A, 866-870-5752. Five seven five two. Uh, that is the way to get through. Um, let me go to let me go to Francis and Whittier. Hey, Francis, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. What I'd really like to have is some of your energy. <laughs> but no. I yeah, do yeah. have a question. You don't you don't you don't see me after I get off the air and go home. You don't see the energy sure the energy it. dropping at that. But anyway, what can I do for you? Okay, <laughs> got a two year old, just a black cat, uh, rescue cat. And she's fine. She's weighs good. Um, she looks normal. But when she runs, you can see like two little jowls in like right uh, in front of her back legs. They don't seem to hurt. I, t I touch them. I do everything. But somebody said that they had a dog one time that it happened and they had to have it like, you know, the the fluid removed or whatever well it depends what it you know it could be you know there's no pain you know the first thing that came to mind a lump in the back i'm thinking hematoma right um but have you spoken to a vet about it no i i want your opinion first uh, first of all i you know without first of all my background's in behavior okay so right, so right. W without seeing it i'm sure i've seen it before but without seeing it i can't i can't even yeah, in other words, it's something a vet should look at. I hope the vet comes back and says, you know what, you wasted your time. You should have stayed home. There's nothing wrong. But the bottom line is I think you should have it looked at. Um, and you said the cat's how old? Two years old? Two years old. She's a young cat. It's probably nothing. It may be nothing at all. But I think having it checked is definitely the way to go. This way to clear your head. And if it is a problem, you can take care of it before it becomes a, a bigger problem. Doesn't that's, that make sense? That's good. Thank you. What's the cat's name? Caroline. Is this the first cat you've ever had? No, God, no. It's probably about the eighth. Eighth cat you've ever had, huh? Yeah, well, we have a, a store, and this is the second cat, the first cat that was here for 14 years. Now she's two years into it now here. So you, you have a, it's a, it's a store cat? Uh-huh. What kind of store do you have? You can tell me. Carpet. Carpet store? Oh, yeah. God, my listeners use you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> I'm telling you. In other words, hey, listen, I really appreciate that phone call. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to put you on hold, and I am going to send you, uh, I am going to say, what am I going to send you? I'm going to send you. There's no real problems with your cat. He's not peeing outside. He's not doing this. He's not doing that. You're going to get a t-shirt. I want these t-shirts all over Southern California. I, I put these t-shirts. I design. I'm totally colorblind, and I designed these t-shirts myself. That's why they're totally black and have white print that says none of my friends walk upright. Hey, the phone number here, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. And we are back on the Pet Show on more next. And coming up in just a few minutes, we'll be interviewing my good friend, Geraldine Gilland. If you live in Southern California, there's an event taking place next Sunday. I'm going to be there. Cancel all your plans. This is a place you're going to want to be. We'll talk to Jerry in just a little bit. 
Uh, right now, the phone number here, 866-870-KRLA. Let me get back to the busy phone lines here. We are going to, oh, God. Let's go to Long Beach in Mariana, I believe it is. Hi, Mariana. Welcome to the show. Hello. Hi. Hello? Hi. How are you? Hi. I'm, I'm good. It's actually Maria. Maria. Okay. What can I do for you? Yeah. Well, you know what? I rescued a, I found this little parakeet about two weeks ago in a parking lot in, in right after work. And, um, he, you know, he's young. You could tell he's young. He's not a baby baby. But, um, I mean, you know, if I was able to catch him, I was worried that a cat could catch him. Yeah, you know? sure. So I, um, I brought him home and he's the sweetest little thing. He's so cute. Um, and I, you know, I got him all set up with the cage and, and the food and everything. Um, and I bought him a little mask. But he doesn't want to go in there, and I was wondering um, before I go trying to you know buy every nest in the store and just you know to see which one he'll you know, want. Um, what is there something that you recommend? Give him, give him some more time. How long have you had him now? Just two weeks. Give him some more time. God, this Just poor bird. Time. Yeah, this is, you know, this little budgie was out on the streets in 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 Long Beach somewhere, and you found him in a parking lot. God knows what this poor bird has been through. Yeah, you know, he got right. away from somebody. I mean, are, are, can he fly? Um, you know, he can only jump like five feet at a time. Yeah, train. probably his wings are clipped. You might want to have that checked as well. And they clipped his wings and a bird gets out. How do they escape? You're luck he is lucky that you found him and not some other predator. In terms of not liking his nest, you know, birds are kind of funny that way. Uh, and, you know, they, even though they're small, they are part of the parrot family. And very often it takes them time to adjust to anything that's new in their, in their territory. So I would give it a lot more time with the nest. You might want to put some fruit and vegetables in there, see if that provokes him to go in there, spend as much time... Here's what I'd okay. like you to do also. Take the cover. You cover them at night, right? You cover the cage? Uh-huh. Take the cover yes. of the cage and rub it all over your hands and on your shoulders so that it has a real strong scent of your body. That's number one. Number two is if you want to teach the bird to talk or if you want to teach the bird to whistle, here's the secret. At night, when it's pitch black and the cage is covered, that's when you talk to the bird. If you try to oh. talk to a bird during the day to teach him to talk, it'll work. But the bird's distracted. He's looking over here. He's looking mm -hmm. over there. If it's pitch black and the cage is covered, he has nothing to focus on but your voice so if you want to have a bird that's an incredible incredible talker cover the cage at night when it's dark and that's the best time to teach him that's awesome he's so good i mean i can actually the first day i was able to put my hand in there and have him stand on my finger right now he eats out of my hand um did you, you check know, did you check to see if anyone had reported a missing parakeet in the area well you know it was like in a business area it was a business district yeah. um no, I didn't. Um, See, that would have been the only thing. I'm just hoping that it didn't belong to some child or something. The yeah. fact that it can't fly, um, it's kind of telling me that the wings are clipped. Maybe both wings, or maybe sometimes they just you know, put one wing. I've, I kind of looked at it, and, and I, it looks like it's just really young. Um, really? I don't think the wings are clipped, but... You know, I mean, he's really young, and that's why I think he's so trainable right now. Oh, absolutely. But, that, yeah, just the more you handle him, the better off you are. Uh, the more socializing he gets, the better off he is. I think you're going to be absolutely fine. Yeah, he's just so sweet. And we call him Johnny. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, Johnny the parakeet. You should have called him found. Uh, but what a great story, though. It just breaks my heart that he got loose from somewhere. I'm just so, the only thing you might want to do, you've had him for two weeks, you just might want to call, just, just out of curiosity, I would call the local police department in your area and just say, by any chance did anyone report a missing parakeet? Okay. Just leave it at that because it might be a kid's bird. And, and let's just, yeah. I think that's the right thing to do. I'm, I'm sure, right. I'm sure probably no, it probably doesn't belong to anyone, but just in case it did, I think that's the proper way to approach it. Okay. Thank you. Do you have any much. other pets? Do you have I, any? I listen to your show all the time. I love your show. I recommend your show to a lot of the people that I know whenever I, they tell me about their dog problems or the problems that, you know, listen to you know, <laughs> doctor, the pet doctor. Or, yeah, you're great. Do you have any other, any other animals besides the bird? Um, we have a, a bunny that we've had for, gosh, 10 years, what kind, 11 years. What kind, what, kind of, what, kind of, what kind of rabbit is it? She's, um, she's a little um, dwarf bunny. A Netherland, a Netherland dwarf, probably, right? Pardon me? She's probably a Netherland dwarf bunny. Oh, yeah. You know what? I'm not sure. She, she's been so long. It was yeah. a, a Santa Bucker. Uh, what am I going to send you? You know, I, 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 I'm getting bunny questions. I'm getting parakeet questions. I have no parakeet food. I got no bunny food. You know what? Never mind. Oh. I know what I'm No, you're an animal lover. I'm putting you on hold. I'm giving away a lot of t-shirts. We're running out of t-shirts already, and I'm, giving, I'm not giving you one, though, Alex. A t-shirt that says, none of my friends will walk upright. 
is be, I did already give you. Will be on its way. By the way, if you want those T-shirts, and I think they're like sixteen bucks. The money goes to the Hugs and Kisses Animal Fund. The shipping I think is free. Maybe it's, I don't know. Anyway, go to my website, thepetshow.com, and check out the T-shirts. Phone number here eight six six eight seventy K R L A eight six six eight seven zero five seven five two. Here's the deal. I'm going to take a break right now. When I come back, I'm going to be on the phone, hopefully with my good friend Geraldine Gilliland, who I absolutely adore, big animal lover. Big fundraiser coming up next Sunday. Now, generally, you know I can't go to fundraisers because they're normally on Saturday. This is next Sunday. Guess what? I will be there. It's going to be an incredible day. I'm looking forward to it. Jerry will tell you more about that when we bring her on the show. By the way, Geraldine, one of the reasons I'm so friendly with her, she, she owns my two favorite restaurants in all of Santa Monica. So we'll talk to Jerry in just a little bit. Meantime, what I want you to do is, Brooke, if you can hang on, I promise I'll get to your call when I'm done with my interview. Chris, the same thing. Um, also, I'll be giving out the phone number for the network show as well. So if you can stand by me after the interview, we'll take some more phone calls. Again, that number, 866-870-KRLA. Hey, joining me in just a minute is going to be my good friend, chef, restaurateur, author, just an incredible lady, a big animal lover, does amazing things for animals. My good friend, Geraldine Gilliland, who, by the way, just happens to own my two favorite restaurants in all of Santa Monica. And they are Finn McCool's Pub, if you like Irish food, but if you're into Mexican food, Lula Casina Mexicana. How's my Spanish? Okay, not so good, huh? Not so good. All right. With me right now is my good friend, Geraldine Gilliland. Hey, Geraldine, welcome to the show. Hey, Warren. Good morning or good afternoon. How are you? I am doing fine. My Spanish is not so good. They're telling me that I should st stick with English a little bit. I think you should, too. Okay. Yeah. I, there's a lot of people that uh, say I that. I think it's a little like Spanglish. <laughs> Spanglish. I like that. I'm, I'm speaking... Sp see, you can't make fun of me anymore, Alex. I'm speaking Spanglish. Anyway... Yeah, that's what I speak. <laughs> Spanglish? <laughs> yeah. Spanglish with an Irish accent, though. That's a whole different ballgame. That's true. All right, so let me talk to you. First of all, you got this big event coming up next Sunday. And usually these events take place on Saturday, so I can't attend. But this is a Sunday, which means there's no way in the world that I would not be there. So a couple of things. I know you have a special announcement to make. But first, tell my listeners about what's coming up next Sunday, how they can help, how they can get tickets, what it's all about. So if you just give them some information, then we'll chat specifically about what they can do. Okay, well, the event is the grand opening of our new sanctuary. It's in the Cornell area of Agora Hills in the Santa Monica Mountains. And it's been in the works for a year, not actually over a year. And um, I'm having the grand opening, and it's called Chiquita's Canines at Cornell. Uh, Chiquita's Friends is my charity for um, rescue work. And we're inviting... Anyone who wants to come, uh, you can get your tickets on Eventbrite. But um, anyone who wants to come, we're having an amazing spread of mostly vegan food. Of course, Warren, since you're <laughs> attending, we are muddling up some raspberry and blackberry jalapeno margaritas with Cointreau. I'm tasting them right now. <laughs> uh, you know, we tasted them out that day. Remember it, Lula? I do. I do. <laughs> And I got a case of Casamigos tequila, so we're going to get, use the good stuff. I got Tito's vodka, so we're going to do Tito's Bloody Marys. Tito's is a dog, by the way. Tito is a dog, I hear. Um, and then we're, you know, uh, I just discovered this um, new um, vegan meat called the Impossible Burger. Yes, I've heard about it. In fact, they serve it, I believe, down in my, you know, I go running past, uh, 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 what's it called, the counter every day. Well, I'll tell you, I tried it yesterday. It is unbelievable. It looks, it tastes, it, it smells like real meat. Huh. And it's very hard to get, by the way, but w they donated a case of it. So we're going to do impossible sliders um, at the event and a whole array of like vegetarian and vegan stuff, gazpacho and sweet potato tortellini. And I've got flatbreads and all kinds of little uh what we call in spanish or spanglish antojitos <laughs> better you said it than i but i also understand there'll be some cooking demonstrations as well well we you know a lot of people ask me what i feed my dogs so <laughs> i was going to show them how to make a chicken rice sweet potato carrot spinach uh like a fresh diet using people ingredients just give me a bowl i'm there <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so in other words, besides, besides all the great food and the great wine, and I know it's being uh, sponsored by Cornell Winery, uh, Lula Casino Mexicana, Connecting Canines, Meat Canine Rescue, and of course, Chiquita's Friends. So it, it's, it's a great group of people putting this all together. What's going to take place with the animals out there? I know people can bring their own dogs and walk them, or there's going to be dogs available for walking. So tell us a little bit about the, the, okay. the, that well, day. Charlotte Mead, my, lovely, my adorable partner in Paso Robles, she's bringing Don. Usually she travels, I would say, with 14 or 16 dogs. So she's bringing Don some of her seniors and some of her adoptable dogs. And so if you don't have a dog on Sunday, you can borrow one of ours. Jen Davenport is taking the dogs through Peter Strauss Ranch, which is on the same street as the sanctuary. So you can go with Jan and take your dog. And um, we just need to know how many male dogs are coming because we want to make sure we have enough fire hydrants set up for them. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> and that's, she's, she's, people and, don't understand um, what's we have involved. Music and um, just, uh, just walking around the sanctuary and seeing the new animals we have a oh, warren you're going to like die when you see them i know I, I i was when i was at the restaurant a couple of weeks ago i i there were just two chihuahuas that came in do you remember the two dogs they were like oh yeah one oh, yeah. was one was yeah. like older and blind and I, I was holding the dog and, and gosh you just sat on my lap for like an hour and wouldn't move just wanted to be loved Come yeah on. that was liz taylor she she was precious but you'll see some of that she may be coming um but we have, you know, we have right now, we have, we're getting rabbits from bunnies from, we have them there. We have kitties and we have a mother beagle called Maddie and nine little five week old beagle puppies that I will tell you are the most amazing little pups I've ever seen, Warren. You know, I have a big, I'm a, I have big old mania. You do have big old mania. I know that, Jerry. Yeah, you do. There's no, so there's no be lots of animals. And then yesterday we took, we have wild peacocks on the property and this is their birthing time. And we noticed that the white peacock, which is really, really rare, um, she had one pup left, one little baby left. So we were able to get the baby and the mother and get them safely into a big chicken coop until the baby gets old enough to fly and they, they can be protected there. So this is going to be one of those days where there's going to be great food, there's going to be great drinks, there's going to be a great day, like people getting together, and also at the same time, you'll get to see a bunch of great dogs, meet some great dogs, maybe make some donations to some great organizations, and help some of these animals out. And I know it's a beautiful, beautiful lo location um, there. So there'll be dogs for adoption, you can bring your own dogs, I really can't believe you're asking people if they're male or female to know how many fire hydrants they need to bring. <laughs> I, I just never thought, uh, did someone, I wonder, did someone rent portable fire hydrants to one of Geraldine Gilliland's events. That's what I want to know. <laughs> I found them actually on Amazon. <laughs> That's funny. So here's, here's what I'm going to say. If my listeners, next Sunday, and as you know, a lot of times I can't make events because I'm on the air on Saturday, but next Sunday, Denise and I definitely have this on our calendars. We're going to be there. It's going to be a great day. I've met many of these people. If you've not met Geraldine or if you've not met uh, Charlotte, let me just tell you from my own experience, I've been doing this for a few weeks, you know. Um, these are people, when you look in their eyes and you hear them talk, you can, you can just feel the uh, authenticity that they have you know there's a lot of people in the humane and rescue community that may not be so authentic but these people walk the walk and that's why i'm such a big supporter uh, of charlotte as, as well as jerry so again jerry if people want more information they want to come out next sunday they can go to chiquitasfriends.org chiquitasfriends.org Chiquitas or they could email me at info info at chiquitasfriends.org I, we also put it up on the front page of my website, so you can go there as well and click over to hers, and that's thepetshow.com. I'm hoping next Sunday turns out to be a fabulous day. I'm looking forward to seeing these beagle puppies. I am so, I mean, I, w one of them, the little guy, he's only, the, the it, other dogs are four pounds each, but little guy, there's a little runt of the litter we wasn't sure was going to make it, but his name is Prince, and he's this tiny little thing. He's only half the size of the others, but he made it. And, and the other thing that's important is every time I speak to you or every time I've, I've, I've met Charlotte, uh, you've taken dogs that maybe other people would never even consider taking, older, you know, blind. Well, deaf, I'll tell just... you, Warren, something happened about a month ago, and I had no choice but to take in. I got a call from a rescue friend, and she's going to be there, and she said, you'll never believe, but we found this dog called Chiquita at the Lancaster shelter. She's... 12 years old. She's been there for six months. They were going to euthanize her. She's a, a yellow lab 
And of course, I immediately went and got her. And she, I'm looking at her right now. She's pretty old. She was the breeder dog at the shelter. So she got beat up a lot because, you know, when they would bring a lot of like, sure. aggressive dogs in, she's got all these like marks all over her face and her ears. But she's so sweet. She is nothing like the original Chiquita, <laughs> my first dog. But when you find a dog called Chiquita, I mean, what are you going to do, right? Of course you got to take it. But here's the, my next question for you. Now, you sent me a note yesterday and you said yeah. you were really excited about something. Yes. Something about rescuing beagles. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, okay. So many of you may know that I have beagle mania, which I've already said that. But about five years ago, I met this amazing woman called Shannon Keith. And she started a rescue called Beagle Freedom Project in 2010. She actually mortgaged her house to start the project. And we've been friends ever since. It was love at first sight. And I actually did their big event here that, that summer, Beagle Mania Part 1. We're going to do Part 2 next year. But so we've been talking and we're friends. And we decided to partner at the new property, at the sanctuary, with Beagle Freedom Project. And because they've changed their... Um, they're going further afield now. They're going to China. They're going to Spain. They're going to Mexico. They're, get, they're taking other animals, not just beagles. They've changed their name to Rescue Freedom Project. And I, can, I am so happy to say that they will be a really big part of this event also. And also, they're, we're sharing the property because we do the same thing. And we love animals. Uh, that's uh, first of all that's so exciting um i've known about shannon for years i'm just so glad that everyone's getting together and the bottom line is everyone has one thing in mind and that's saving as many animals as i can again uh, geraldine first of all I'll probably see you this weekend at, at, at lula's but anyway besides all that if people want more information if you want to get tickets and take it from me i know this money is going to go directly to help the animals you can go yeah, to 100 percent. there's nobody being paid for this we're all volunteers that's exactly that's exactly why people should attend so you can go to chiquita's friends you can go to my website, thepetshow.com, or you said they can email you where, Geraldine? At info at chiquitasfriends.org. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Bring my margarita class for next Sunday, okay? Okay, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> give, all the, give all those pups a big hug and a big kiss, and I'm looking forward to seeing you and all the people coming out there, and I'll be talking about this a little bit more because I want to get as many people out there to help you guys out as I possibly can. Thanks, Warren. Thank you so much. I'll see you next week. Looking forward. You have a great day. Bye. Bye bye now. What an incredible woman she is. I want to urge you guys again. I know I got to take a break. I want to urge you guys again. You know what? Let me do this. Let me take a break. When I come back, grab a pen and paper. I'll give you the information on the event taking place next Sunday. You got to come to this event. If you've never been there, it's an amazing place. The phone number here, 866-870-KRLA. A quick break, then right back to your phone calls. You know? And we are back on the pet show. Here's the deal. I know it's kind of been a shorter show today because we did an interview and it's rarely I do interviews, so I didn't get to answer as many calls as I normally do. So here's the deal. As soon as I get off the air here, I'm running across the hall, literally running across the hall to start my national Canadian show. You can start calling at one o'clock. It's the same exact type of show, except it goes all over the U.S. and Canada. I give away the same prizes. Here's that phone number. You can start calling it at one o'clock, 877-725-8255. 877-725-8255. Now, you will be my first callers because the show starts at six minutes after one. So for my California listeners, if they start calling at one o'clock, you'll be ahead of the rest of the country in Canada. So I'll get to your questions, give you the same gifts. Again, that phone number, 877 725 8255 877-725-8255. Be patient. It goes into an entire different studio into Washington, D.C. So be patient. I will get to your calls. I will answer your questions and I will give you a great gift. 877-725-8255 right now. Stay tuned right here on KRLA because coming up is Living Pain Free with Dr. Mark Darrow, my good friend Nita. Until next week, give all of your pets a big hug and a kiss for you. One right between the ears for me. I'm Warren Eckstein. You've been listening to The Pet Show.